Question 5 from the 2023 Higher Physics Examination from the SQA. A person is standing at the side of a road. A police car approaches and then passes the person at a constant speed of 31 metres per second. A siren on the police car emits sound with a frequency of 440 hertz. And we've got to calculate for three marks the frequency of the sound heard by the person as the police car approaches. And the speed of sound is taken to be 340 metres per second. We'll just go straight to relationship sheets and we have the relationship between the observed frequency is going to equal to the frequency of the source and into the bracket of the speed of sound divided by the speed of sound plus or minus the speed of the source which is making the sound. And we've got to decide which one of those denominator plus or minuses we're going to use. And the rule of thumb is if the car is approaching you, we think of the distance getting smaller, it's been subtracted, therefore use the minus sign. So for the car approaching, we're going to use this form of the equation. So the car approaching, the frequency observed by the observer is equal to the frequency of the source when it's at rest, divided by the speed of sound, divided by the speed of sound, that's going to be minus the speed of the source. So all we have to do is just take a time and plug in our numbers. So the observed frequency in this case is going to be equal to the frequency of the source, which is 440 hertz, multiplied by the speed of, so speed of sound, which is 340, we're given that there, all over 340 and take away the speed of the source, which is 31 metres per second. So all we have to do is do that simply in the calculator and we get an answer of 484 hertz. So we're hearing a higher pitched sound as the car approaches. Question 5a part 2. State whether the frequency of the sound heard by the person as the police car moves away is greater than the same as or less than the frequency heard by the person as the police car approached. And this is for two marks, you must justify an answer after stating whether the frequency is greater, same as or less than. So always keep in mind this diagram. You can see that sums up the whole thing about the Doppler effect. You can see as the car was approaching the man, the waves are crushed up. Therefore, you're going to have uh, the, the man's going to observe a higher frequency. But as the car is moving away, in this particular case here, you can see the waves are spread out behind the car. And therefore, the person is going to hear a lower frequency as the car moves away from them. And that's really justified. You can justify it by that by that diagram there. And we know that in this case, as the waves moves away from her, the frequency can be found by the equation, once again, the observed frequency equals the frequency of the source, speed of sound, divided by V. And because the car is moving away from you, you're going to have a plus at the bottom for the speed of the source. And you can see that the denominator is going to become bigger, and therefore the f observed frequency therefore become smaller. So the answer is it will be smaller, and the diagram justifies it. Question 5 continued, Part B. The emergency lights on top of the police car consist of an array of red LEDs and blue LEDs. There's a simplified diagram of the lighting circuit shown. The red LEDs and the blue LEDs each flash twice per second. And for one mark, we have to determine the frequency, or sorry, the period of the AC supply. Well, we know that if something's going two flashes per second, we can say it's two cycles per second, and we can say that the frequency has got to be equal to two hertz, two cycles per second, two flashes per second. Now, the frequency is related to the period with the following relationship. Period T equals one divided by the frequency. So, the period in this situation will be one divided by two. is going to be one half, which is 0 0.5 seconds. So, we say that the period of these lights flashing, or the AC supply, is going to be 0 0.5 seconds. Now, part two, it says, explain why the red LEDs and blue LEDs do not light at the same time. Now, we're dealing with an AC supply which is constantly changing polarity. And we know that for an LED, it must be configured like that in order to light. The polarity must be such that in the diagram, the plus is on connected to the triangle part and the minus is connected to the bar part. If it's configured like that in the circuit diagram, the LED will light. 
But we're dealing with a constant changing plus or minus here. Uh, the other LED, which is at this set here, will light when we have the negative uh, at the bar and the plus at the triangle. This is the way the, the, the LED lights. That's the configuration, the way it lights. Now, we can watch what's happening with the circuit if it's slowed down a wee bit uh, as follows. There's a the circuit there, and you can see that the alternating supply is changing. One minute, the top rail is going to be plus, and the next is going to be minus. Plus and minus. Now, when the top rail is plus, the LEDs will conduct and in the left hand branch in light, that's the blue arrow shown there. When the branch, the right hand branch, uh, is a situation where it's going to be minus, then it will conduct as well. So you can see from the diagram there that, the, that there's a, a branch which is going to be blocked off when the AC supply changes. So once again, when the plus uh, AC supply is at the top branch, as shown, the LEDs will conduct. When it's at the negative, it'll conduct the second branch. Another branch will be blocked. So just study that little diagram for a second, and you can see why one set of LEDs go on and the other set of LEDs go off. It's because the alternating supply changes the polarity uh, at the LEDs. Question 5b continued and it's part 3. An energy band diagram for the red LED is shown. You have the conduction band, you have the electron sitting on the bottom level of the conduction band that's going to drop down to the valence band. And we know that when the electron drops down it will emit a photon of energy E which is going to be exactly the same as the band gap there like that. So, we have to determine the energy of the emitted photon. So, energy E equals HF, but we have to write down the sister equation for that equation. So, E equals HF, and we know we can write the sister equation as H Planck's constant times C all over the wavelength. That's because the frequency is equal to the speed divided by the wavelength. From your basic wave equation, only the speed is in C, the speed of light. So there's a sister equation of HF, which you have to know, Planck's constant times the speed of light divided by the wavelength. So now we can work out what the energy band gap is. Energy E equals Planck's constant, 6.63, times 10 to minus 34, we'll leave out units for a moment, times the speed of light, 3 times 10 to the power 8, and put a bracket around that, and you're going to divide it by the wavelength, which we have to put into metres, so 625 nanometres becomes 625 times 10 to the minus 9 of a metre. And if we do that in my calculator, we end up with a value of energy, uh, the energy gap with 3.18 times 10 to the minus 19 Jules. Question 5, part B. Explain in terms of the energy band gaps the difference between the photons emitted by the red LEDs and the photons emitted by the blue LEDs. Well, here we've got a band diagram of the uh, red LED being emitted. You can see that the energy gap, the band gap, is that size there, and it's given by E equals HF. And we know we've got the sister equation there as well, which is equal to HC upon lambda. And we know red light has got a long wavelength, so if we've got a long wavelength, then that denominator is going to make the energy smaller. So, what happens for the blue LEDs? Well, here's the band gap for the blue LEDs. And you can see the band gap is much bigger. And you can also write down the sister equation for E equals HF, as equal to HC upon lambda. And for blue light, the wavelength is much smaller. And if the wavelength is much smaller, the denominator is going to become smaller here, and therefore the overall value of E is going to become a lot bigger. So there we get a situation for red LEDs, the band gap is much smaller, which produces what we call a longer wavelength uh, photon, red. And for the blue LED, we have the band gap of the transition being much bigger, which gives rise to a bigger energy, which must in fact mean that the wavelength has got to be smaller in order to give the big wavelength. And a small wavelength means blue light. So there you have the story in terms of band gaps. Thank you.